In this math tutorial, I'd like to take a look at the commutative, associative and distributive law. Three very, very important laws that we use with almost any calculation in mathematics. So pay close attention and make sure that you can understand and apply these laws. Because later on, when you get to higher grades, it will be essential for you to know these laws quite well and apply them. Let's go on to the first law then. The commutative law. The commutative law states the following. That it says that we can swap numbers over and still get the same answer when we add or multiply. What do we mean with swap numbers over? Let's say, for example, we have two numbers in an operator, 5 plus 2. Then we can swap those numbers around. Let's have a look. So A plus B, A and B can be any number. So let's say A was 5 and B was 2. So then 5 plus 2 will equal B plus A or 2 plus 5. So swapping the numbers over or around, swapping the 5 with the 2 and the 2 with 5 will get us the same number. And the same with multiplication. If we have A times B equals B times A. So those will still be equal. Let's apply this to an example. 5 plus 4 equals 9. But we can always then say that 4 plus 5 also equal 9. Thus, 5 plus 4 is equal to 4 plus 5 because both of them equal 9. And thus, A plus B equals B plus A. For multiplication, let's try 5 times 4 equals 20. And we know that we can also say 4 times 5 equals 20. Thus, 5 times 4 equals 4 times 5. Or we can then say A times B equals B times A. Now it is very important to remember that the commutative law only works for multiplication and addition, not for subtraction or division. If we do this with subtraction, with a minus operator or a divide operator, we will not get to the same answer if we swap the numbers around. Our second law is the associative law. And the associative law says, it's, says the following. It doesn't matter in what order numbers are calculated when we add or multiply. So let's have a look at this then. A plus B plus C can then also be equal to B plus C plus A or A plus C plus B and so on. The same with multiplication. A times B times C will equal the same as C times B times A or A times C times B. Doesn't matter the order, the numbers will still get the same results, but only if we add or multiply. Let's have a look at the following example. If we add 1, 2 and 3 together, we will get 6. But we will also get 6 if we add 2, then 3 and then 1 together. Thus, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is also the same as saying 2 plus 3 plus 1. Both will equal 6. Or A plus B plus C equals B plus C plus A. Let's apply this then to a more complex calculation. 55 plus 9 plus 5. Now, if I first have to add the 9 to 55 and then add the 5, I'm going to have to really think about what results I'm going to get each time. So how can I make this easier? Well, by applying the rule, the law. It is easier to add 5 first to 55 and then add 9. So if I then swap the 9 and 5 around, 55 plus 5 plus 9, by using the associative law, I'm going to get 60 plus 9, and that, that's easy, 69. Instead of having to go 55 plus 9 is mm, 64 plus 5 is 69. It takes a little bit longer than just to swap around the, the, the numbers to see what adds up or multiplies easier. The same for multiplication. So if I have 1 times 2 times 3, I know that will give me 6. And... If I swap some numbers around to and say 2 times 3 times 1, that will also give me 6. Thus, 1 times 2 times 3 will also equal 2 times 3 times 1. Or then I can say that 8 times B times C will also equal B times C times A. The order doesn't matter. Applying this to a real-life calculation, 2 times 19 times 5. 
this looks very tricky. If we have to say 2 times 19, we're going to get 238 times 5. Or oh, oh, now it's getting a little bit more trickier to do a calculation like that. But what if we swap around numbers to make the initial calculations easier? It is easier to multiply 2 with 5 first. So if we multiply 2, with 2 times 5 times 19, we can easily see that 2 times 5 will equal 10 times 19, easy, 10 times table, add the 0, 10 times 19 is 190. But again, very important that the associative law only works for addition and multiplication. We cannot use it for subtraction or division. We will not get to the same result. Our third and final law is the distributive law. This is a very unique law and a very, very important one. So pay close attention and try to practice it as much as possible in order for you to succeed with it. The distributive law is the following. It is multiplying a number by a group of numbers added together. Well, not just added together, it can also be subtracted from each other. But for easy understanding, let's say it's multiplying a number by a group of numbers added together. So then we can also say, explain it a little bit further, we can say that it is numbers that we group together that is multiplied by the same number. And we can also then say that we do each multiplication separately and then add all of them together. Let's see how it works. If we have a, a number, and we times it with a group of numbers added together, b plus c, we can then say that we can multiply that a with each number separately, a times b plus a times c. So let's apply it for better understanding. Calculate the following. 5 times 3 plus 6. So here we can see that we have a number multiplied by a group of numbers added together. So then we can easily say that we have to multiply that number with each number in the group. So then we're going to say that 5 times 3 plus 6 in brackets is the same as saying 5 times 3 plus 5 times 6. And now we can just go ahead and work it out. 5 times 3 is 15 plus 5 times 6, 5 times 6 is 50, and adding 15 and 50 together will give us 45. Another example we can use the distributive rule, although a little bit in reverse, is in the following scenario. When we have to multiply huge numbers, 6 times 254. So it's difficult, it's going to take us a long time to work it out if we, if we try to, to work in multiples of 234 six times. It's not going to work. It's going to take us uh, at least a minute or so to work it out. But there's an easier way that we can apply in just 10 seconds, and that is the distributive law. So 6 times 234, if we take that 234 and we break it up into place values, we're going to get the following. We're going to get 6 times, grouping those numbers together, 200 plus 50 plus 4. So our hundreds, our tens, our ones are grouped together. But we are going to multiply the same number for each one of them. Because 6 times 234 is the same as saying 6 times 200 and then 6 times 50 and 6 times 4 and adding the numbers together. So now we can go ahead and apply the distributive law a little bit further. And we can say now this equals 6 times 200 plus 6 times 50 plus 6 times 4. Because we multiply the same number with the group of numbers that are added together. And now we go ahead and work each group out. 6 times 200 is 1,200. Plus 6 times 50 is 180. Plus 6 times 4 is 24. Adding those numbers together will give us 1,404. We can also use the distributive law in a long range of numbers. Let's have a look at the following. Calculate the following. 6 times 5 plus 6 times 4 plus 3 times 2 minus 2 times 2 plus 5 times 5. Remember, I've added the minus here just to show you that we are allowed to use the distributive law for subtraction as well. Although, in many cases, when we have to use it for subtraction, we have to take note of our integer laws. In a scenario like this, we need to go and find the common multiplier and group those together. Let's have a look, look here. We have 6 times 5 plus 6 times 4. Ah, there's a common multiplier, 6. So let's go ahead then and group those together. So we can say that 6 times 5 plus 4 in brackets 
let's see if there's another groups that can be grouped together. We have the next one, three times two minus two times two. Yes, the common multiplier here is two. So we can group the three and minus two together, multiplied by two. So we can then say two times three minus two. And then five times five, there's no common multiplier there. So we're just going to keep that one as is. So then, grouping these together, 6 times 5 plus 4 plus 2 times 3 minus 2 plus 5 times 5. Now we can go ahead and work it out. Because now everything is grouped together, we can now first do the bracket. So we can say that 6 times 5 plus 4, that's the same as saying 6 times 9 plus 2 times 3 minus 2 is the same as saying 2 times 1 plus 5 times 5, which is a group on its own. Working that out, we're going to get 6 times 9 equals 54, plus 2 times 1 is 2, and plus 5 times 5 is 25. Adding all those numbers up will give us 81. Also, again, very important to remember that the distributive law applies for addition, subtraction, and multiplication, but not for division. Do not use this law for division. So the common operator that we cannot use these three laws on is division. Very important. So why are these laws important? Well, these laws help us to group difficult number combinations together and allows us to easily calculate those number combinations. It also helps us to better understand BOTMAS or order op operations, and it also forms part of the order op operations. It also helps us in algebraic expressions and equations to simplify or expand expressions and equations in order to get to the correct answer or in order to move the expression or equations along. And more importantly, also, it helps us to also solve more complex equations or functions later in higher grade mathematics. So these laws are extremely important. What I've noticed is that a lot of kids that struggle with algebra, especially with the introduction, when we start doing multivariable equations, adding like terms together, is that they forget to apply the laws, especially the distributive law. The distributive law is extremely important in mathematics. So make sure that whenever you find it difficult or you find that you're not getting things right, when you have to multiply with brackets, then go back to the basics and practice your distributive law again. If you found this video helpful, please remember to subscribe and check out any other video that might be helpful to you. Thanks for watching.